Hey everyone, welcome to round one of my playthrough of the Thistletop Delve. This is the final scenario in the Burnt Offerings adventure of the Rise of the Ruin Lords adventure path within the Pathfinder adventure card game. So this is it. This is the final event. After this, I've got no more Rise of the Rune Lord sets. So even though, I mean, that, that only takes us through really the first module of Rise of the Rune Lords, but that's what I have. I may play through the other scenario that came with the box after this. I may. I may not. I'm not sure. Anyway, the situation is, as usual, four locations, a couple of special rules, which reminds me, I forgot the special rule last time that made all of the goblin enemies more difficult to defeat than they actually were on the card. I forgot to integrate that. My fault. Uh, what can I do? Uh, I could go back and replay the whole thing. I'm not going to go do that. That scenario was so weird and so oddly difficult in surprising and unexpected ways. I feel like I got my money's worth. Okay, so the Thistletop Delve, wearing a strange star medallion and raising prayers to the goddess Lamashtu, the vicious fanatic Nualia has been commanding the goblin, her, her goblin servants from dungeons beneath Thistletop hunt down Nualia and her henchmen before they can unleash greater evils upon Sandpoint. There are henchmen as usual, there's the villain Nualia, and during this scenario, the global rule I'm almost sure to forget, the difficulty of checks to acquire items or weapons is increased by two. I tell you what, I'm going to put this fancy looking die with the two facing up on that card. Who knows, maybe that'll make me remember that there's something to remember uh, about the global uh, global rule. Those are always really hard to remember for me because they're not on the cards in front of me. So, what do we have? We have a throne room. We've got a uh, Thessalonian dungeon, ancient, ancient dungeon. Goblin Fortress, again, and some Warrens. I feel like going straight to the Goblin Fortress last time <laughs> yielded some very surprising results. Should I do that again? I don't know. The Warrens feels like a place that I could look. Uh, let's, let's have a look at how threatening these places look. The Warrens actually feels a little bit not super threatening. Of course, I say that now. I think I'm going to go to the Warrens first. And as usual, I'm going to have Valeros, I think, go first. Its entry marred by dozens of tiny claws. The mouth of this dirty tunnel yawns as if ready to disgorge hordes of monstrosities. Soft scurrying noises echo through the twisting dirt tunnels, which bend dizzyingly, narrowing to only a few feet wide at points. The light catches the pale color of bone within, but also the glint of something that shimmers. At this location, when you encounter a monster, put a random monster from the box on top of another random open location deck. Okay, you know what? This is not the best place to start. I know that feels metagamey, but as I've said, the, the rule book advises you to take that under consideration as part of the strategy. So from an RPG standpoint, it feels very metagamey to, to look at that information. But from a card game standpoint, it's fair game. All right, looking uh, elsewhere, how about the Goblin Fortress? Crashes, discordant singing, and manic laughter ring from the crude walls of this goblin holdfast, a fortress of branches, scrap metal, and garbage as elaborate as it is ramshackle. The bodies of unfortunate travelers, the paint-smeared skins of livestock, and the half-eaten remains of seagulls serve as warnings of the inhabitants violent whims, and demented sense of humor. At this location, goblins, uh, monsters with the goblin trait are increased by two, the, the difficulty to defeat them. Uh, and then to, to close this location, summon and defeat a goblin raider henchman. We'll just send Valeros in, flip over a, a timer card, and we need to draw up to four cards, one of which must be a weapon, and Two of them are, so we're good. We, and we got some armor. This is kind of the uh, really, this is my favorite starting hand, I think, for, for Valeros. Uh, chainmail, short sword, 
night watch and a long sword you know some weapons some armor and a utility card what i need to remember here is something about something and also two two goblin creatures and starting potion of so th this isn't six this is eight potion of gracefulness it's an intelligence check of not six but eight because the check to acquire items or weapons is increased by two well i think that puts this well out of his reach his intelligence is a d6 and um that's just not something that he can do actually it's a d6 plus one because i gave him a plus one when he leveled up but that still isn't gonna oh wait no no yeah <laughs> Six, seven, eight is the actual. So this is wasted. That's gone. It's, it, it sends it to the box. All right. I think I'm going to do the predictable thing, which is to discard the Night Watch. I should mention that both Valeros and Sioni are one HP higher now because the previous scenario granted them each a weapon. So their deck is 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 inflated by one card compared to what it normally should be. I don't know if that's right, but I, it just seems strange to me to grant a card as a reward if you are then not able to add that card to your deck. Maybe you're just supposed to keep it separate from all the other cards in the box and just know that you have the option to include it in your deck. That seems weird to me, though, so I'm assuming that the intent was to grant them a bonus of an extra card, which was a weapon. He's just discarded an ally card, which I think said that you could do that to explore. Yes, you can. So he's going to explore again. Hopefully it'll be combat. It is a goblin raider henchman. If undefeated, well, it's not going to go undefeated, I've decided. Okay, so a couple of things here. It's a goblin. It has the goblin trait on it. In this location, as indicated by my reminder to die, this is actually two more than what's written on the card, meaning instead of eight, we need a ten to defeat this creature. Luckily, we are dealing with Valeros here, and we have a longsword uh, that grants us, in addition to his d10, another d10. And of course, that's in addition to his melee skill of three. So I'm going to just negate everything and say that he has a one bonus for his melee and that there is no increased difficulty so now i'm just looking at what's on the card so that's eight minus one so he needs a seven across two d10s that's a ten and that's a four so he beats the henchman which means that he can close this location if defeated you may immediately attempt to close that location. Well, I will absolutely do that. And the funny thing about that is, in order to close this location, I have to summon and defeat a goblin raider henchman. So I guess when we clobbered this guy, he wasn't quite as, as dead as he looked. So he gets back up. He's still a goblin, still a goblin. So he still gets his plus two. Valeros, luckily, is still Valeros. So he's got his d10s, and he's got his plus three, which cancels out the plus two, but still has one left. So literally the same thing. We need a seven. I'm nervous about doing this twice. So I'm thinking that maybe what I'll do instead to close this location is reveal a short sword so that I can roll a strength and melee, plus a d6. And then, beyond that, I could recharge this card to add yet another d6. And I just kind of feel like, I don't know, somehow I feel like that's going to be the smarter move. Valeros gets to recharge that card because of, his, because of a special class feature of his. So, I've now got... 2d6s and a d10 and a plus one to get a seven so a seven across all of these die i feel relatively good about 
So that's a four. That's a th uh, five. So that's we've we've met the requirement. That's another five. So yeah, I feel uh, quite good about that. So Valeros, once again, straight out of the gate, got a henchman and has closed the location down. That's a pretty big deal because, as usual, I mean, all of those cards, all of those cards, are are cards that we don't have to sort through, uh, sift through by by expending our timer deck. The, the location has been closed by Valeros, so he's way over there at his location. And now it's up to Sioni to go to some other location and start delving into who knows what. Not super confident that that's a great idea, to be honest. But she doesn't have to explore. Yeah, I think the next turn, that's probably what she'll do. And that next turn will happen the next round. Thanks for watching.